everyone, I'm Hebe and welcome back. I have the new eyeshadow palette from Byredo and it's the Flora Kalahari palette. A couple weeks ago I did do a video of Will I Buy It and I was talking about this eyeshadow palette and at first I was really interested in it but I kept looking at it and saw that maybe some shades were similar and I said that I was going to pass on this palette and several of y'all said no you need to get it it's beautiful so I caved and I went ahead and bought this palette. I'm still trying to be on a low buy so I did purchase this palette so other palettes that I said I was going to get I'm going to put on hold. Like the one by Too Faced, I believe it's the Sunset palette. I can't remember the name, but I'm going to pass on that one. I did say that I was going to get that palette in that video, but I'm going to pass. And I did mention that I'd like to get the Shoe Amora palette. I'm having a hard time trying to find it, so that one's an easy pass right now. So I went ahead and bought the Flora Kalahari eyeshadow palette from Byredo. This limited edition palette is housed in a reflective silver mirror case stamped with a marble desert flower that embodies the modern femininity of the palette. The Flora Kalahari palette draws on the imagined hues of otherworldly desert scapes to create 18 radiant earthen shades. A mix of luminous, easy to wear shades come in both warm and cool tones in matte, sparkling, and metallic finishes. While its long lasting formulation delivers crease free coverage and a highly pigmented finish. This palette cost $96 off the Byredo website, but I did purchase this one off of Suffrages and that one cost $91 US. Unfortunately, in both of those places, they do say it's sold out, but if you really want this palette, try giving the Byredo stores a call to see if they may have it because you never know you never know when this palette finally arrived and I opened it up I have to admit it is very beautiful it's nothing like what I saw on the Instagram pictures because like I said I thought a few of these shades look similar and yeah a couple of them do look similar but just the aesthetic of it and the shades when I swatched it they are beautiful I did five looks with this eyeshadow palette and four of them will be with me talking and this one the fifth one will be set to music let me go ahead and show you the palette when I first got it I did some swatches and I'll show you the five looks that I created and I'll see you on the other side to talk about this palette and to do some shade comparisons here is the box and just like with all the other Byredo palettes you push it out and then slide out the palette and here is this beautiful mirror palette with that beautiful rose. I know it's a mirror so you're going to see my window here. Before I sat down I already took this palette out to take some videos and pictures and if I didn't already I'll insert some here and it looks beautiful so let me go ahead and take this out. I don't want to put any fingerprints because I know that's what's going to happen with this mirror type palette. Again here is the front with what's in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> it does say Byredo, and here is the back with the names of the shades. It does have a magnetic closure with a mirror, and it does have the number B. At first I thought it was 13, but it's B for Byredo. And then here is the palette, untouched. I have to say that this is beautiful in person than what I saw in the picture. Very pretty. And when I took it outside, you can really see the the reflectiveness, the glitter in here. Let's go ahead and swatch it. I know it's gonna get messy because the shades are very close together. There's no descriptions of each shade, but I think we can figure it out. So let's go ahead and swatch the first one. Very smooth. Wow. This one is snow dust. Oh, look at that. That does look like snow. Golly, this is beautiful. It's very smoothing on my arm there and very bright, very reflective. This is just after swatching the first shade and you can see that it does come to the shade down below. And also some of this shade came up there, huh? Okay, so we do need to be careful when we use this palette with our fingers. Let's see how it works with the brush when I start playing it with it, but let's keep swatching. This is a matte shade clay. That's more my skin tone. Let me uh, build this one up. Let's see, I hope you can see that there. Yeah, that's more my skin tone with just a little hint of peach in there. Let's swatch Faded Eden, this beautiful olive green. Oh, very nice. That did swatch very nice. And I think I have shades that are similar to this, but we'll do some comparison later. Next is the Graces. Let me swatch this a little bit better. That one's a very pretty pinky peach. I think this is a matte shade, but I see a little bit of a, I don't know, maybe a yellow shift in there. Maybe some shimmer too. Yeah, I see a little bit of a shimmer. Just a little. Ooh, the next one, Sandstorm, that's very creamy. Ooh. Oh yeah, that one's a pretty 
bronzy gold. Actually, it has a little bit more of a pink shift in this one. And the last one on the first row is Desert Rock. Oh yeah, that's a cool tone, matte shade right there. Do you see a little bit of a lavender? Just, just a little bit on my skin tone there. So I just swatched the first rows, so yeah, you can see some of the shades do move around when you put your finger in there. Like, look at the graces, it just went to the shade below it. It's not blowing away, so you do need to kind of wipe it off when you use that shade. Let's start with the second row, and this one is Quicksand. Oh, that one's a pretty, pretty rose bronze. Yeah, that one's nice. This blue shade under the sky, let's see what this one looks like. That's pretty. Oh yeah. Blending out the bottom here to see the base and it does have dark brown base to it. And you can see the blue sparkle in there. Very pretty. Next one is Earthquake. I'm going to re-swatch that one because I think my finger went into the shade below it. So you can see a little bit of that shade there. So yeah, you can see that that was right there. But let's re-swatch Earthquake here. This one is Petal Door which I believe means gold petal, gold flower. Okay, this next shade I'm very curious about, Adventurous. Oh yeah, that one's another pretty one. Just looks like burgundy fire, but it's very pigmented, very smoothing. And these two together, wow, that's gonna be pretty. And this one's the last one on the second row, Bravery. I'm gonna swatch the bottom row on my left hand, and since I am left-handed, my swatches with my right hand are not so good. This one is Oasis Dream. It's another one with a pink shift, kind of like a bubblegum pink, almost. The next one's very smoothing, which is Dried Dahlia. Kind of like another rosy gold there. All right, let's go to this deep shade, Calcite. Let me do another swatch and bring it down here. I know with my right hand it is very hard to, to do that. Ooh, but it has like a pink glitter to it. Maybe some lilac in there too. Ooh, and there's still some left on my finger. And I believe this is the deep matte shade Burnt Umber. This one's like a reddish brown. And I believe the name of the shade is A Poupe. All right, very subtle there. This one has some pink to it, but is not as pink as Bravery. This one has a little bit more, I guess, gold to it. And then the last one here is Rose the Sable. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And this is very creamy. So here is the last shade of the palette. Oh, that one has some meat to it. All right, let me clean my fingers because there's a lot of pigment left on my fingers and put some primer on my eyes and we'll start with the first look. I'm using the Hourglass Eyeshadow Primer and I know I'm going to do more than two looks because I'm going to do a look in each eye today. And I've been looking in the mirror to see what I want to do first and there's just so many choices. I mean, oof. I'm gonna go for a dark look in one eye under the sky. I'm gonna use this one on my lid. And let's see, and one of the matte shades I'm gonna use is this one, Clay. There's only four matte shades, and I'm gonna use it on this eye. This one is more my skin tone. I'm just gonna place this in my crease and above my crease. So with the darkness of the shade under the sky, I just need something light to just make it look diffused. At least that's what I'm hoping. All right, you can see a little bit of the color there. Now let's go with under the sky. I'm gonna use a flat shade of brush first. I just wanna see how this would apply with a brush. I'm just gonna pack that on the center and bring that out. Not bad. Let me see what happens when I use my finger. Using my finger does give a little bit more pigment to it. Because using the brush, you can kind of see through it. And it kind of went above my crease and you can see that there's some glitter there. We just go to the flat shade of brush and blend that out. Because it does have a pretty base to it. So when I blend that out into the crease, there is some glitter. And because of my aging lids, it does emphasize the texture there. So I'm gonna go back in with the first brush and with clay and just hopefully buff that out. All right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna try Snow Dust, this white shade that does look like snow. I'm gonna use the other side of the flat shade of brush. Oh, wow. And place that in the inner corner. Okay, I think I'm gonna go in with Burnt Umber, this dark matte shade, and just kinda give me some dimension in the outer corner. Oh, that's pigmented. I'm just gonna Concentrate it right here in the outer corner. And it does change that up a little bit. And bring that to the center. Oh, that turned out really pretty. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, let me go back to the first brush with clay and just blend that out. Let me go back in with under the sky and just bring that more to the inner corner. 
try it that way. Then going back in with the flat shader brush and going in with snow dust and just more in the inner corner. Add that more to the inner corner. I think that is good with that look. Burnt Umber was a good choice because I love it right there in the outer corner because it really does define the eye. For this side, let me go in with this matte shade Desert Rock. This is a cool tone matte shade. And let's place that in my crease. And kind of bring that down too in the outer corner. Now Desert Rock is a cool tone shade and sometimes cool tone shades on my skin tone just makes it look a little dirty. But let's try to brighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to try the Graces, this pinky shade and I hope you know it does have some shimmer to it. But let's see what happens when I place that in my crease. Let's just play with it. Yeah, this one does have a little bit of a shimmer. So I'm not going to put that in my crease. I only place it in the outer corner right here just to see what the shade looks like. So yeah, let me go back to Desert Rock and just kind of cover that up. Let's use calcite and place that in the outer corner. Now hopefully this one won't show my texture because of the glitter there. I just need something to give me some dimension. I hope you can see that there is pink glitter. So it's not a shimmer shade, say like the Graces was. But you can see the eggplant shade underneath it. So it's not very shimmery. It's kind of like a matte shade with some pink sparkle glitter in there. And there is some fallout with that one. So let me just build that up. I'm going to place this shade Dried Dahlia, this pretty rosy bronze with a little bit more meat to it, this shade right here, and place that all over my lid. And you can bring that to the inner corner. I'm just going in with a very small flat shader brush, going in with that same shade, placing that more in the inner corner. My fat finger just can't reach in there. I just need a small shader brush to get that shade in there. Well, you know what? Let me put something light in the inner corner. So I'm gonna go in with this shade. Let's see, I believe it's a poupée. I know I'm saying that name wrong. But let's place that more in the inner corner. Maybe that might brighten that up too. I think that's all I'm gonna do on this side. Two totally different looks. Let me go ahead and clean underneath my eyes because there's a lot of fallout on both sides, mainly from the shade under the sky, right? Yeah, under the sky, that's the name of the shade, but this is very pretty. But let me clean this up, put some makeup on, and I'll come back and do underneath my eyes. This side, I'm gonna go in with the shade that I used my transition clay and place that underneath my eyes. I'm going very gently with burnt umber. You know, I do like burnt umber, especially when I put it in the outer corner really do like that shade. Let me try to go in with snow dust and place that underneath my eyes in the corner. I know my allergies won't like it, but I think it just needs that pop right there. Because my eyes is very sensitive when I place something in the inner corner. That snow dust just calls for it to be in the inner corner. It really does. Let's try putting the graces on this side underneath the eyes. Instead of me trying to put it in the crease, let's put it underneath my eyes. I'll just concentrate that more in the outside. Just remembered I have eye cajols from Byredo, so I'm gonna use some of those. So for underneath this side, I'm gonna go in with this one, Neela Neela. It's a navy blue. So let's put a navy blue underneath my eyes here. Let's try that. I'm not gonna put it in the waterline, I'm just going to put it underneath the lash line. I'm just gonna get a small brush and blend, blend it out. Let's just add some color to this look. Yeah, not bad. Now I do have a silver one, Shandy, I believe that's how you say it, Chandy. And I probably could have placed that in the inner corner. Well, let's just do that. Just in case the shadow that I placed there just makes my eyes a little water. Let me swatch Shandy for you. So that just made the inner corner pop there. And then I do have a brown Bora Bora, and it's a dark brown. Let me place it underneath my eyes here. Instead of a black, let's go with a brown. I'm also going to place it in my waterline on in both eyes. Let's try that. But yeah, I'm just going to place it in the waterline. This one's going to be a hodgepodge of different colors. <laughs> Let me finish putting the rest of my makeup on and we'll see how this looks. Here's the finished look. And I have to admit, these eye looks are very, very pretty. I was a little worried about this side. I mean, since I placed the graces in the outer corner and didn't like it because it was a little too shimmery, and then I went over it with calcite. A little worried about it, but it turned out really good. And calcite did blend into a really nice deep matte with just a little bit of a pink glitter. It's not shimmery. And this side, 
This is very pretty. Do love putting that burnt umber out there in the outer corner. Very pretty, especially over under the sky. I thought I'd mess that look up too. But it looks beautiful. So you can see that the colors just blended out beautifully. You can see every color that I used, especially that first shade clay. I thought it'd be too light, but it worked. And then burnt umber, I think that's just a beautiful, beautiful shade. And under the sky and snow dust, I think that's very pretty. Even though I did place the eye cajoles chandi, you can still see snow dust there in the inner corner. And then this side, you can see calcite. It's more of a matte with some pink glitter. So you can buff out the glitter and get more of the matte shade. And then dried dahlia is just a beautiful everyday bronzy shade. So here are both looks up close. My husband came in the bathroom when I was finishing up and he said, oh, I like those two eye looks. And he also said that he likes the foundation that I'm trying too, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked him which one was his favorite and he couldn't decide. He said he likes the blue and he likes the brown. So this one he calls the brown. I think I want to do a total of five looks. Do you know I want to do another look in each eye and then the main one? Because the main one that I want to use is this one, Adventurous. I think that's just going to look beautiful all over the eye. This time I primed my eyes with the Smashbox eyeshadow primer and I think for this side I'm going to go for an all matte look. I think so. I haven't quite figured out what I want to do for this side. I have an idea, but let's go all matte here. There's only five matte shades here, and I don't think I'll be using all of them. At least three. So let's start with this one, Clay. Let's place you in the crease here, above the crease. And I'm using the Sonia G Detail Pro. It's a big fluffy brush. My bad. There's only four matte shades in here. I don't know where I got that number. <laughs> I was counting the graces thinking that one was a matte shade but we realized that in the last look that it wasn't. So let's go into this shade Earthquake. This one's very pigmented from the swatch. I'm just gonna go lightly in. Thought it might be a little too orangey but I think it's very pretty. Now let me go back in the first brush with the first shade and just kind of blend out that harsh line there. Let's see how Burnt Umber will do on the lid if it's gonna to be too dark. Using the Jumbo Blender and just placing that shade all over my lid. That's very pretty. I go a little bit higher than my crease, just kind of fuse those two shades together. I have to say Burnt Umber is such a pretty shade. It is very smoothing on my lids there. And of course, going back in with the first shade, just blend everything out. And even with this, if you wanted to add a little metallic shade, a little something something to this look, you can place it in the center of the eye. I think we're just gonna leave it as a matte, as a matte look. So for this eye, I wanna go in with this olive shade, Faded Eden. Even though I've done several looks with this type of a shade, but let's see how this one will look. And I'm gonna pair that one with this matte shade, Desert Rock. So I'm gonna place Desert Rock in my crease. All right, let's go into Faded Eden. I'm gonna use my finger, place that all over my lids. Or lid. <laughs> Next, I'm going to go in with Refer number 28. It's a small, flat shader brush. Getting that same shade and just kind of bringing it up into my crease, just to bring it up a little bit higher. Because my fat fingers will not get up there. Okay, and I think that's all I'm going to do with these two looks. Kind of simple, everyday look. I could deepen up the outer corner with this to give it some dimension, but I just want it to be a very simple, easy, everyday look. I didn't see much fallout, of course, nothing with the matte shades, and didn't see fallout with Faded Eat in there. All right, let me clean up, put some makeup on, I'll come back and do underneath my eyes. This side, I'm going to go in with Earthquake. And on this side, keeping it simple, going to go in with Desert Rock. I'm trying to make this like an everyday look. Now I'm going to use the same eye kajal on both sides, Bora Bora. Place that both sides underneath my lash line and in my waterline. All right, let me go finish putting the rest of my makeup on. Finish the looks, and yeah, these are very simple, very easy, everyday wear looks. I have to say that the matte look is, I think, one of my favorites. Because the matte formula, it is very smoothing on my lids. It's not drying. They didn't muddy up, and they're blending into each other very nice. This one's not bad either. Very simple, just two shades. Faded Eden is very pretty, and it pairs very nicely with Desert Rock. And like I said, you can place a deeper shade in the outer corner to give it some dimension, but I just wanted to do 
an easy everyday look with not that many shades in this one. And it's very pretty. I hope you can see how smoothing and very creamy these matte shades look. And of course the two shades here work very nicely. Yeah, not bad. The last look I already know, I wanna go into the shade Adventurous. I wanna use that one. I'm gonna use that on both eyes, yeah. I hope I can make that one look pretty. And I think it will look very nice with this gold shade. Let's see here, Petal Door. Yeah, I think these two shades will work very nice together. So I'm gonna try to do that. Well, let's get right into that one. Here is the finished look, and what do you think, guys? Looks like a sunset, doesn't it? Now, what do I think about this palette? It is a beautiful palette. It really is. The shades are beautiful. The formula, it is very smoothing on my lids. And I have to say, my favorite one is this one, Burnt Umber, this matte shade. And since this one is my favorite shade, of course, my fingernail just had to get into that palette and dig a hole. <laughs> but I was able to smash that back in there because this is a beautiful shade. The formula is very nice. The all matte look that I use with this shade, Burnt Umber, is one of my favorite looks. And I think the next one would be when I use this shade, Under the Sky. It's a beautiful blue shade. And I've done that look several times before, but when you pair it with Burnt Umber, I think that look is beautiful. So those are my two favorite looks. This one comes in probably third, and the other two are tied. So this is a beautiful palette, and I'm glad I did get this palette. I was able to get it. But there are some, I guess, cons about this palette, I have to say. For one, they are very close together, and they are very soft. So the shades do kind of jump into the next palette. So I want you to see how this palette looks like after I've used it several times. You can see that it just gets all messy. And I don't mind a messy palette because that just means that it's slow. But when it goes into the next shade and it kind of messes up that shade, that, that's kind of a, you know, a con. And there are a couple shades that are similar, just like what I thought. Mainly these three, but I would say that these two are more similar. Bravery and A Poupée. I always have a hard time saying that. So let me show you. The top one is going to be Bravery. And this one is A Poupée. The texture of it is similar. Maybe this one, you know, has a little bit more gold to it. And this one a little bit more pink. But, you know, they are a little bit similar when they're on the lids. This last one I thought was similar when I was looking at the picture. But this one has a little bit more meat to it. And this one's Rose to Sable. So, yeah, that one has some meat to it. And it has a real pretty shift. So, I would say it's like a combination of these two looking at it. Let me swatch this one, Quicksand, and this one, Dried Dahlia. Let me com uh, compare these two. So this one's Quicksand, and this one's Dried Dahlia. Quicksand does have a little bit more rosy tone to it, and Dried Dahlia, again, has a little bit more meat to it. Again, they are a little similar to me on my skin tone, and when you turn it, it does look a little similar there. But they are beautiful shades, nonetheless. I mean, they are really pretty. But there are some similar shades in this palette. All in all, I'm glad I got this palette because this is beautiful, created really pretty looks with this. But again, if you're interested in this palette, maybe call a store to see if they could ship it to you. If not, I did bring some other palettes here to do some comparisons, and maybe we might find some similar shades that are in this palette that you already have. So let's see if we can find any similar shades with this shade, Faded Eden. So let me swatch Faded Eden right there. And I just did a video of this palette by Heritage Cosmetics, a brand new indie brand, the Be Mine palette. And there is a similar shade. Let's try this olive green. Let me switch hands. This one has a little bit more bronze to it than the one by Byredo. And I also did some comparisons with this shade in that video too. So let's just go ahead and pull the same palettes. And plus I found other palettes that are similar. So let's go into the Sydney Grace, this Be Mine palette. Let's watch this one, Eye Candy. This one may be a little bit more green. Yeah, this one has some 
some green in there. Maybe a little bit of blue too. Another one from Sydney Grace, the Enduring Love Palette. Let's go into this one, Deanna. This one may be a little bit darker. Yeah, that one's darker. Now this one I didn't bring into that video with the Heritage Cosmetics. This is by Artist Couture, the Supreme Nudes. Forgot about this one. So let's try it. this olive green. Let's see, Supreme. Yeah, Supreme. This one has a little bit more yellow, a little bit more gold in it than the one by Byredo. It has a little bit more meat to it too. Let me swatch it next to the one by Byredo. So this is the same one by Artist Couture. Yeah, it is different. Now let's go into Palace by Byredo. This is the one that comes in the oyster set shell. And this one is Metal Boots in the Snow. So let's try to swatch these two. So there is one. Let me swatch it next to it again you there. Okay, yeah, it's not the same. And then let me go in with this one. Yeah, that's a little bit lighter. One more olive green shade, then we'll move on because we could easily go into this rabbit hole. This is by Pat McGrath, Midnight Sun. Let's try this one, Wicked Envy. And let's use my pinky. Don't have any shades that would match this one from the Flora Kalahara palette. The only one that I could see that's similar is maybe this one that's by Artist Couture. So here are the comparisons of the olive green shade Faded Eden. Oh, you know what? I do have one more. Let's go into one more. This is by Chanel, the Mediterranean palette. Let's try it this shade. Let's put you here. Maybe that's a little bit more bronzy. I think that's all the olive green comparisons I'm going to do. Let me go ahead and wash this off and we'll try to compare some of the other shades. Now let's try Under the Sky and this one is a beautiful blue shade. Very pretty. So let's put you here and let's go into this one. Another one by Pat McGrath, Subversive. And I did a video on this and I did a similar look using the blue shade that's in here. This one, Blissed Amethyst. All right, this is more brighter. And I have to say between the two blue looks that I did, the one from Pat McGrath Subversive and this one by Byredo, I think I like the Byredo better. Because this one is a very pretty blue, goes well with my skin tone, and it has that blue sparkle in there. And then when I added Burnt Umber in the outer corner, beautiful, beautiful. I think with the Pat McGrath look, I placed this shade Black Metal, which was a little bit more cooler in tone, but I like the warmth tone of Burnt Umber. But anywho, let's go into this palette by NARS, the Climax palette. Let's go into this blue, and we probably could have swatched this olive green with it. I mean, again, we can go into that rabbit hole. Okay different. This one's more like a blue jean material. That's what the color reminds me of. And since we got that one, let's go ahead and swatch the olive greens together. So this is the one by Byredo. And then this one in the NARS Climax palette. This one I think has a little bit more yellow base to it, whereas this one by Byredo is more bronzy. All right, I think that's going to be enough olive green unless we find another one. <laughs> let's go to another Pat McGrath. This is the Mothership Celestial Odyssey. And this one right here, Noir Moon. Put you right next to it. I would have to say that the glitter in it is very similar. It's just the base. The base is a little bit more deeper here in the Pat McGrath than the Byredo. But the glitter, the shimmer, I think it looks very similar. One more and then we'll move on. Let's go into this one by Vanity Makeup, the Signature Palette. Let's see this metal shade. I think this is going to be too gray. Yeah. Yeah. Not even close. Now let's go into this shade, Calcite. Put you here. I hope you can see the, the pink glitter in there. It's very pretty. Another Pat McGrath palette. This is the Mothership Celestial Divinity. And let's go into this one, Smoke Amethyst. Okay, yeah, this one has a little bit more purple to it. Let's go into this shade, the one that I'm wearing on my lids now, Adventurous. Let's see if we can find something similar to this. So this is the one by Byredo, very beautiful shade. Now I did try to go in my stash and I didn't find anything similar to the shade, but we'll we'll keep looking. Let's go into this one by Natasha Denona, the Sunrise Palette. Let's go into this shade, Phlox, I believe that's how you say it. Okay, that one's a little bit more raspberry. Let's try this one, Azalea. Oh yeah, very light. And then this one, Poppy, that one's a little bit more red. Yeah. Just opened up the Zendo palette and I saw a blue shade. Let's swatch this one. Equilibrium. Yeah, let's swatch that one. I mean, since we have it. It says it's still on my arm. Yeah, that one's a little bit brighter. And a little bit smoother, too. But for Adventurous, let's go into this one. I know this is light. Yeah, this one's going to be a little bit more orangey. Let's go into the Love palette, also by Natasha Denona. And this shade, Passion. I think this is going to be too burgundy. 
yeah, to Burgundy. And I think that's all the comparisons I have with this one for Adventurous. Now for this one, Burnt Umber, I did find something in the Pat McGrath palette that I want to swatch and just compare it. So here is Burnt Umber, beautiful shade. I love this shade. So let me go into this quad by Pat McGrath, Voyeuristic Vixen. I always have a hard time saying that. And this shade, After Dark. And this one has a little bit more burgundy in it. Let me go back into Subversive and this shade, Deep Shade. Let's see, let's use a clean finger. You here. Yeah, a little bit more brown. A little bit more cooler in tone than Burnt Umber. We'll do a few more shades and then we'll call it quits. But I want to see this shade, Rose the Sable. Oh, didn't clean very well. <laughs> but this is the one by Byredo. Now let's go into Mothership 2 Sublime, the shade up in the top corner. I believe it's VR Nectar. All right, yeah, similar in tone, but this one's a little bit more brighter, but it has that special shift in there. I don't know, they are pretty close, but this one is a little bit more pinker and brighter. Let's go for some of the bronzy shades like this one, Dried Dahlia, and let's go into another Natasha Denona, the bronze palette. See if we can find something similar in here. Let's try this one, Palladium. All right, yeah, that one's a little bit more bronzier, a little bit more rose tone. I don't know, looking in the mirror, they do look similar. What do you think? So let's go to this one from the Byredo palette, Sandstorm, another creamy shade, very pretty. And the same palette, the bronze palette, let's go into this one, True Copper. Okay, yeah, that one's a true copper. All right, let's go one more here, quick sand. And see, I kind of went into the shade above it, Snow Dust. And you can see some Snow Dust right there on the top. Let's go into this one, Alloy. Oh yeah, that's not the same. Yeah, let me swatch it next to this shade, Palladium, the one that I used over here. Let's put you here. Okay, yeah, that one's close too. That one's really close. I think that's all the comparisons I'll do because again, you can just fall into that rabbit hole and start digging out all these palettes and there could be like one or two shade difference between these shades. But that was actually kind of fun trying to find similar shades to this palette. And again, this is a beautiful palette. I'm glad y'all convinced me to get it. The shades blended out beautifully. The pigmentation is there. And this shade, Burnt Umber, it's just a beautiful shade. I love this shade. Aired with Under the Sky. Yes, and the matte shades are very nice. Even this cool tone one, Desert Rock. This one did look a little dirty on my lids, but you just need to brighten it up or warm it up with another matte shade. But they didn't look dry on my lids, very smoothing on my lids. So thank you very much, because I'm glad I got this palette. Now, of course, there are a couple things in here that aren't my favorite, like I said, where the shades just kind of merge into each other. When you put your finger in there, you can touch the shade next to it, and you know, it can kind of transfer like what I did here with Snow Dust. And this one doesn't bother me, but it may bother some people that you do get fingerprints on this mirror case. To me, it just lets me know that this palette is love. So the fingerprints doesn't bother me that much, but it is pretty with this desert rose on there. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of me using the Byredo palette, the Floral Kalahari eyeshadow palette. If you like and enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this. And you all have a wonderful, wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.